And as soon as they unearth the skeletons, they will be taking bone samples to send to uh, probably University of North Texas at Denton to match that, to, to, enter, uh, to, to run the DNA, to enter that into what's called the CODIS data bank, which is a national combined DNA identification system uh, uh, thing. And if the family reference samples are there, it should match that bone sample with one of those families, and then they'll have that person identified. Okay, that's what we do here. Uh, ex exactly the same thing. Also, we do identifications based on taking uh, x-rays. We call it uh, anti-mortem, post-mortem radiographic comparison. So we would take an x-ray of a decedent and compare that with medical record, dental films, and medical uh, films to see if it's the same person. There's some other tricks we can do to help identify people. But she wants to find out first who the child is, and then she'll do what we do, which is help the medical examiner uh, determine the cause and manner of death. And I suppose this is sort of like a historical archaeology thing as well, is that they may have data maybe from the, uh, the infirmary at the Dozier School, or maybe there's, uh, there's some record of uh, what might have happened uh, to that child. And then she'll be looking uh, certainly for evidence of trauma, uh, which you should not find, right? There should not be evidence of a beating or a gunshot or a stab wound or whatever uh, that might be. This particular case, for example, please don't film that, but, I, but I'm just pointing down to it. We know is a pattern injury. Uh, we've seen this before. This is someone who was killed by a hammer. So those are hammer blows, pattern injuries on a hammer. So we would report to the medical examiner who the person is, uh, describe the injuries to the skeleton, and then we would offer a mechanism of injury for that, blunt trauma, sharp force trauma, gunshot uh, wound, um, and uh, introduce a little bit of description in terms of biomechanics about how that might uh, have, have happened. So in this particular case, we would say, well, it, it, it is um, blunt force trauma, produced a patterned injury. The pattern is reminiscent of hammer blows that we've seen in the laboratory, but anything that's one inch in circumference that's metal, um, you know, that uh, could have caused those injuries. And at that point, we submit that, uh, that report. So I think what Erin's going to do is, number one, identify the decedents using DNA. She will also be able to tell um, whether the individual was uh, a male or a female, depending on the age. If they're too young, she can't do that. Older, um, you know, post, um, you know, adolescent teens, she probably will be able to tell whether it's a male or a female. She may be able to tell the ancestral group. So, in other words, are they primarily of West African ancestry or European ancestry, which in America we would say, um, you know, black or white, uh, which is kind of the population uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the way we would look at that, that old Dozer School uh, population. Uh, she would tell us about how old the person was at the time of their death, about how tall they were, that ancestral group and the sex. That will say they should have a list of, of people that should be in that cemetery, or at least missing people that never went home or didn't show up in the cemetery. And she'll match those. She'll seriate them according to how old they are. That'll help her with her identification. Uh, and then she's looking for things like blunt trauma. Uh, apparently there is, there is um, ethnographic accounts of, and, and uh, eyewitness accounts of, of kids getting beat and stuff like that. So she'll certainly be looking for things like broken ribs and, and, and those kinds of things. Um, that's it. I mean, then, then she would tend to report, and hopefully, uh, once these kids are identified, uh, there would be family members that would come and and, uh, and want to take their bodies back and um, and, and bury them and, and uh, you know get, get the truth uncovered about it. So, do you think at all that the age of how old these children, like how long ago this was, is going to be a factor? Is it going to make it more difficult to identify? It shouldn't. Uh, bones, shouldn't. bones are bones. It hasn't been that long. Okay. Um, it, I haven't seen uh, the remains, but thinking about the soil up there, the preservation should be pretty good. In other words, she should be able to do the same type of analyses we're doing on, on the remains that we have in the laboratory. And some of the remains we get in our laboratory are decades and decades, time since death. Uh, well, we get archaeological stuff in here. Uh, but most of our victims were alive uh, within a year or so ago. Um, it's been a while for her, but the, the preservation of the bone should be really good, and, and she should be able to do everything she needs to do with it. Yeah. What else you got? Mm, what else? Is there anything else they'd be looking for in that area other than bones itself, like maybe discarded clothing or Any, blood? Anything, anything's important. Uh, she's an anthropologist, so context is everything. So she'll be looking at, and I've already read an account of, uh, they, they found some, um, I think, uh, casket hardware. Um, they found, uh, you know, you're looking for, for uh, the type of clothing. Are they in 
uh, a shroud? Are they in their own clothing? What types of personal artifacts may have been buried with the, with the child that would help identify them? Uh, what types of things are in the grave that would help date uh, the grave in terms of the year that it was done? I know that a lot of these are unmarked or maybe all of them are unmarked graves, but casket hardware changes and burial goods uh, you know, change and there may be some clues in there about, uh, you know, maybe the decade that that, that burial uh, occurred. But there's a lot of a lot of clues in the ground. She's a very good archaeologist. She should be able to find a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And since it's such a sensitive issue and it could be coming bigger, what is there anything different that you go about doing than say any other case? No. 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 Her work is her work. Uh, our work is our work. It doesn't matter if it's a quote high profile case. Um, it, they're all the same. Uh, and, and the important case is the one that you're working on at the moment. Uh, it doesn't matter. I've been involved in, in quote, you know, high-profile cases, Caitlin Anthony, the Boston Strangler, those kind of things. Those skeletons are no different to me than this skeleton. Uh, this is someone's loved one, right? I mean, it, so it's just as important. There's no such thing, whether they're homeless or whether it's a governor. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter to us. I doubt it matters to her. What is motivating her is justice, um, and, th and that's what we do in this laboratory. We're looking for, we're looking for justice, and um, quite frankly, uh, an anthropologist is probably the only one that can, can do that in this case, because it's going to take an anthropologist's skill and knowledge base to be able to, uh, to figure out what happened. So, so uh, everybody at UF is pleased that she's involved with that, and, and we all know her, uh, and we're proud of her, and so she's going to do a good job um, and get this resolved. It may get really hot politically. Uh, she doesn't care about that. Uh, she, you know, once you've been in Kosovo and, and come around the corner and seen a tank uh, pointed at you and a machine gun and all that stuff, you, you kind of, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, a little political pressure doesn't bother us. <laughs> how, how long a process is this? Is, are we talking weeks and weeks, months and months? This will be months. This will be months. Doing that many exhumations is, is a field season, uh, which again is another reason why uh, it would be difficult for our lab to, to do something uh, like that. Um, but it takes a while. Our cases will range from a week or two to, to several months, depending on the complexity of the case. Michaela back there is working on a burn case we've had for several months, and, and it's, it, the fragmentation is so great, and it, it's such a time-intensive, you know, sort of monotonous type of analysis, but it's got to be done. So, um, you know, each case that she does probably would take a week or two to do the full skeletal analysis and come up with with some things, but the number of people that she's dealing with is going to be at least this summer, probably beyond. I would say it's going to be a multi-year project. She's got good funding to do it, uh, which is important. Uh, so. so you all wouldn't be assisting in any way? She w hasn't asked for any help at all? If she asked for something specific that our lab could provide that she can't provide, we probably would, would help her, of course, but um, I, I don't see that we do anything here um, that, that she wouldn't be able to accomplish at USF. Yeah, so. We'll move on with our work, right? and, uh, and that's it. it. You know, just having worked here and done this kind of thing, I don't mm -hmm. know how many years you've been doing this. 91. Since 91. Um, does this case stand out as just more unusual than other cases, or is it, why, why does this seem so, it sounds like a movie. My thought is that, um, in our country that the state is not very often involved in this kind of behavior if what we're hearing is true. Uh, other countries it happens all the time. Bloody, bloody um, coups disappeared, regimes come in. Uh, this is why the human rights work that Aaron and I both have done all over the world, um, it's just unusual for something like this to happen in America. How could the state of Florida let something like this happen? I think is the, me the appeal of the media um, is that we just we're not um, used to having wrongdoing by the people that we trust, which is which is our government. But other countries, uh, this isn't new. Uh, this, these kind of things happen, I'm sure. So. Um, 